We recently toured another home which was also designated by the same architect as the Dear Wyman home. It's the Governor Richard J. Oglesby Mansion in Decatur. He and Lincoln were were personal friends. He was very instrumental in getting Lincoln nominated the first time and orchestrated much of the convention that was held here in Decatur. He is given credit for having coined the phrase, Lincoln the Rail Splitter, because at the time, Lincoln had a, a reputation as being a railroad lawyer and in the pocket of the corporations. And they believed that by presenting this image of Lincoln as a rail splitter, that made him much more a man of the people. And it, it's kind of interesting that that's how he's viewed today, not as a corporate lawyer, but as a man of the people. He was also a Civil War general, served under Grant, and was wounded, seriously wounded, at the Battle of Corinth, Mississippi. As a result of that, he had to leave the front, but came back and ran for governor at Abraham Lincoln's suggestion. Served as governor of Illinois for three terms. When he married his first wife, Anna White, they lived in a small house immediately west of this one. She was the first lady of Illinois into his first term, but she died in the governor's mansion in Springfield. The governor had already talked with an architect in Chicago, William LeBaron Jenny, and Jenny had designed a house in 1868, but after Anna's death, the governor put the designs away and at the end of his first term, he came back to Decatur and lived in that house with his two surviving children and later married Emma Gillette Keyes, a beautiful woman, considerably younger than the governor. In 1880, his age is listed as 55 and hers is 35. She had been married before, had a son, Hiram. So when they moved into that Greek Revival house, there were the two adults and three children. But they brought the designs back out and Emma modified them, seriously. And they built the house onto the old house. And it became then a wing of this house. The plan was that the old house would house the kitchen and the servants' quarters. And this house was strictly for the family. The house is not in this condition. At the time that we came in, the, the parlor, uh, there was an apartment a restroom that we had to take out. All the mantles were removed. All of them were carried upstairs and kept in the attic, but when they got to the one in the parlor, it was too big to go up the steps. So they sold it, but we did have a picture of it, and when we began to do the uh, restoration, uh, we had it uh, copied. Then when we came to the dining room, there was a wall that we felt was not correct. We took the wall down and there were pieces of the wallpaper, the width of the, width of the two by four that was up against the wall. Um, that was where we found the little swatches of the wallpaper and then the way it was done below the chair rail. And most people, uh, when we tell them that this was uh, wallpaper, they tell us, oh no, that's wood. And it does look very much like wood. The library is the most important room in the house because it is totally original. The gentleman who bought the house from the Oglesby's was an early photographer and he took pictures of the interiors. They, had, they did use those photographs to restore the house so that they had at least comparable furniture pieces in the right places and in the right style. We have a, an interesting mixture in the house. Some pieces belong to the family, some pieces belong to other old Decatur families. One piece in particular we are certain was in the house when the Oglesby's lived here, and that's the hall tree in the front hall. It is a beautiful house in itself. Uh, it is a part of old Decatur. There's so much history, so much national history uh, that this is involved in. And to learn more about events and history of the Oglesby Mansion, log on to www.oglesbymansion.org or call 217-429-9422.